shouting. Ahoy! The lads looked into the sky. They look up and they seem to see. Hey, 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 hey! Figures flying. And just at that moment, Pisa had turned to Tinkerbell and said, Tinkerbell, go down and tell the boys that I have brought them Wendy to be their mother. And Tinkerbell flew down. Hey, 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 hey! But she was not a truthful or a very good fairy. And she came before the lads and said, What's that? There's an evil Wendy bird up there fighting with Pisa. You want us to shoot it down? And the lad called Toodles, who always had his bow with him, squinted up at the sky and said, Oh, I can see it. And he threw back his bow. But just then, Tinkerbell jumped his arm and the arrow flew up, 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 up into the air and caught me. It caught me on the necklace, the kiss that Peter had given me. Tinkerbell! Oh. Boys! Boys, what's happened? What's happened? Oh, no! Tinkerbell? She must have sent the wrong message. Boys, what has happened? Why is she... You shot her, too! Why did you do that? Because Tinkerbell said there was an evil Wendy Bird. No, no, this is Wendy who I brought to be your mother, you idiot! Out of the way! Oh, Wendy, Wendy! Speak to me, Wendy! Wendy, oh! Peter didn't remember what a kiss was, so I was, we had given each other necklaces. They kept me on the necklace from the kiss. Oh, wait, thank goodness for that. But you're not well enough to be taken to the house downstairs. Oh, that happening. No, we shall have to build a windy house right here, boys. I'll have to sleep here. lessons very well. He was always in the back. <sighs> Yawning. Boring, boring. Peter! And as time passed, as Peter wanted it in Neverland, he would come before us and say, Saturday night, everyone! Come on! Hey, 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 man, I'm alive. I'm feeling like a Monday, but Sunday I'll be Saturday night. And he would declare it Saturday night. And I would turn to him and say, Peter, have you got us a party? Oh, yes, a wonderful banquet of make-believe. 
And it was true. Most of Peter's most of Peter's food was make-believe. Like eating your own words. Once in a way, he would say, he would come and dodge us up. But most of the time, he would give us what he called his special water. And we would drink deep of it and feel full. But oh, what adventures I could tell you while all of Neverland lay before us. Waiting for the time to pass you by. Hope the winds of change will change your mind. I could give a thousand reasons why. Such adventures. Could I tell you then of the time that the wild folk came and scouted slightly? So he's bald to this day. All that wild time, the captain did bake his blue, blue cake. And he put it down by the vents. And all my little hungry children, they all wanted to eat it. And all I could do was say, no, you can't. And in the end, I gave it to Peter. And Peter, I put it by the captain's pirate ship. And you, know, Captain Hook, came out and he fell over it. <laughs> No one knows what it's like to be the bad man. All that time that Tinkerbell made me sail across the bay, saying she was going to let me go home in an acorn and sank me. And it took Peter to come and rescue me. But there isn't time, Kate. There isn't time. All I can tell you of is that great adventure, the one that Peter and me had when he said it was Saturday and we should go and take the children upon a picnic as if we really were their parents. All you have to do is stay a minute, just take your time. The clock is ticking, so stay. Make it on your own, but I don't want to grow up. We can stay forever young. And so he took us on a picnic, flying us out to Wild Mermaid's Rock. When the mermaids jumped in the rainbows and while Michael flew his kite, we danced the dolphins round and Peter filled the air with bubbles. And then he swept down and said it was time for the great big banquet, a wonderful banquet. Look at the size of that cake. It's all make-believe. Make-believe food, said poor Slightly getting hungry as Peter gave them once again his magic water. Let's talk. Now, I know, for I am a good mother, Peter, slightly, all of you, all of you, you must go to sleep, for you must sleep after you've eaten and drunk. And I may, Peter, go to sleep. But as I fell asleep, the sky grew grey and dark, and I thought, oh, smells like pirates. But I was already drifting off. Now, how long we were asleep, I do not rightly know. But when I woke up, there was a sound, a sound of wood on wood, and two pirates, two pirates. But they were not alone. Here yeah, we have They had the wild girl. They had Tiger Lily with them. Here, yeah, I think this will be good enough. What do you think, Smith? Oh, we'll come to Oh, yes, I think so. Yes. And the parrot said, We've got to be drowning Tiger Lily. Drowning her ear. That's what the captain said. But Peter, my Peter, he gestured to the kids. He told them to kill the boat. And then he led by voice, Smee, the pan, the other pirate, up into the rocks with Tiger Lily. And all of the As if he was Captain Hook. And when they were the other side of the rocks, he turned to them and said, Oh, run the boat! What's that? What's that, Captain? What's that? You want us to let him? 
He said so. The captain wants us to let her go. We'll cut her free. Do you think we should cut Tiger Lee free? Yes, cut her free. Go then, quick. And she jumped like a fish into the water. But just then, there was a voice echoing. A voice we all know so well. No one. No one knows what it's like to be the bad man. Land ahead, shipmates! Ahoy there! I see land. There's seagulls everywhere. What do you mean? You let Tiger Lily go. I gave no such orders, me. But we heard your voice, Captain. We heard your voice. I told you, Smee, I gave no such order. Oh, I'm so sorry, Captain, but she's escaped now. What are you whispering on about, boy? Listen up. Ew. I've come to tell you some news. Yes, Captain. Now listen closely. The boys have found themselves a mother, Smee. What's a mother, Captain? Oh, bless, he doesn't even know. A mother Smee? Well, I'm not sure I really know myself. I I went to Eton. I'm no a order. I've never really had a mother. <laughs> but it's something I've always wanted to. Yes. I pine for one. And now I have a cunning plan, Smee. Now listen carefully. Yes. We will go on to land. We will find them. We will kidnap Wendy and take her as our own. She will be my mother, Smee. And if you're very, very good, I might even let you share her. No fear! Bog off! I called from the rocks because I, as we could not bear the thought of being Captain Hook's mother. What was that fight, Smee? I'm not going to be their mother, Peter. <laughs> what? I'm Captain Hook. Who goes there? <laughs> I'm Captain Hook. No, no, no. You are mistaken. There is only one Captain Cook, and that is I, unmistakably. Of course I am Captain Cook. You must be an imposter. <laughs> no, I'm Captain Hook. <laughs> what are you? Animal? Vegetable? or mineral? Animal! Are you a hippopotamus? No! Are you a duck-billed platypus? No! Are you a human? Maybe! Are you a girl? No, we are! Then you must be a boy. Yes! Are you an ordinary boy? No! Then you must be an extra-ordinary boy. I Peter Pan! And suddenly Peter jumped out from the rocks. Oh God! And the captain and Peter fought backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards across the rocks. But first they came towards the The captain pointed towards the sea and said, Look! Over there! And that's what he's in the sky! The captain lunged! And my Peter, my Peter was caught! And my Tick, tock, tick, tick, tock, 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 Leaving only Peter and me, my case. Peter, I don't like it. It's getting cold. I want to go home quite badly now. I know, Wendy, I know, but I'm sorry. I, I've got no fairy dust left, so you can't fly, and I can't fly when I'm wounded. I know the tide's coming in, but don't worry, I'll think of something. No, Peter. I'll stay. All you have to do is stay a minute. 
We don't have to grow up, we can stay forever young. But don't worry, I'll think of something. I know, I've got an idea. Michael, when he was playing with that kite earlier, it was so big it nearly lifted him up the floor. So, I'll call it down and I'll strap you onto it and it'll take you to safety. Kite! Woo, kite! And so Peter summoned down the kite and it came down and although I protested, I want to stay! No, Fly, be safe! Sure. An awfully big adventure, I suppose, to die. Oh. Leaving Peter on the rocks as the tide came in. Oh, it's the never never bird <laughs> on a, a great big nest on the rock. Rocky, 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 tide, danger, rock, 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 She was offering me her <laughs> nest as a raft. And so, thanking her, I scrambled off the rock and into the raft and paddled my way to shore and the safety. And, yeah. and do you know, after that, the hat was such an excellent <laughs> nest that <laughs> all the Neverbirds forever afterwards used stolen pirate hats. <laughs> Aren't I clever? And while Peter was telling the world how clever he was, I must tell you of the final adventure and of how I got the children home. What about us? What about all the times you said you had the answers? What about us? What about all the broken happy ever afters? And it began, I suppose, it all began in the schoolroom. I was teaching the children as best I could. Now slightly. A equals B, I think. A, oh, never mind. I'm forgetting. I think it's the water. But do you know what I know? That my mother is waiting for us. She wants us to come home. She'll have that window open. I bet she'll have closed it by now. No, Peter, what do you know? What's more, she'll give breakfast and a bed to all the lost kids. All they have to do is come home with me. She'll have forgotten them by now. Will she really, said slightly, will she really remember? Oh, yes, slightly. She will remember. Peter, said the lost children. Yes? We want to go home. What? You want to leave Neverland? Yes, we want to go home with Wendy. Surely not. Oh, well. And so I went to Peter and I said, can you arrange it? Can you arrange it that the children can come home with me? Where well, they can leave Neverland? If you must, you must. Well, I shall, I shall go and talk to the wild men then, because they're the best at tracking and, and directions and all that sort of thing. And Peter flew off with tears in his eyes to talk and have a pow-wow with Tiger Lily and the wild folk. But as he had the tears, he did not notice that the Captain Hook had seen him fly off. And the Captain was listening to their pow-wow. He heard about Tiger Lily was going to ambush the pirates the next day at the ancient battlefield. How they were going to hide their numbers by marching up the sacred way. And the Captain heard it well. And he heard about the secret drum beat the, the, the Indian, the wild men would make when they had won their great victory. And Tiger Lily agreed then and there, after she had won, to show the children home. And she made an agreement, and Peter was declared in his own words, a great chief! <laughs> and he flew back, and he told us of the secret signal. He told us what would happen. And I said, Johnny good Peter, won't you come? No. Won't you stay? No. And so it was, we waited. While the captain made good 
his plans. And the next morning, he and all his pirate host were waiting there on the sacred path, waiting with their guns and their swords. And as the wild men came up, the captain gave them the pleasure of civilizing. He shot that one by one one by one. (laughs) And declared his triumph. Yes! I am victorious. But that was only half of his cunning. For when he had won, he started to beat out the drums. The signal. Neverland, and we all went out. But as we came out, there was not the wild men. There was Captain <laughs> James Hook, and he caught my children one by one. And he bundled them up into the Wendy House. Yes, into the Wendy House. And he and his men take them, take them off to the pirate ship. But to me, he turned. And being an English gentleman, he turned to me and said, May I, my dear? Oh, charmed, I'm sure. Walk with me. And he led me out, and he was the most charming man I had met in all of Neverland. But just as we came to the edge of the clearing, he made a gentleman's excuse me. Uh, madame. I quite understand. You must excuse me. I just need to go back and... Middle-aged. See some to some business. And the captain went back, for he had noticed one of the vents must be wider, for one of the children was 